Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cordo Coaching. This is the series where you get to take a look inside Magic Limited Coaching. I'm Alex here with somebody we haven't seen in a while, Nathan, who is the person we usually hang out with through these Cordo Coaching sessions with. Nathan, how's it going? Last time we saw you was Streets of New Capenna. How has Magic been? How's life been? You've, you had a little bit of a, a life event <laughs> since I saw, last saw you. It's been a busy summer. So I think, you know, I mentioned it before we had our, our daughter back in November of last year. And yep. so cu that coupled with, I didn't really like Streets of New Capenna, so I didn't really have a large urge to, to, to play it a lot. And since I was traveling, I couldn't record very well. But uh, as a result, <laughs> uh, I kind of took a little bit of hiatus there, but I, I'm back with Dominaria and uh, I've already got, gotten a couple drafts under my belt here. Sweet. Yeah. So if you haven't been with us before to watch these videos this series, what we do is we just go through a draft that Nathan has recorded and, you know, maybe a tricky draft, a draft that didn't go so well, potentially. We go through each pick. I give my opinions on, you know, maybe what I would have taken, talk about what Nathan took, and we divide the picks into three categories. If I just completely agree with the pick, I'm like, yep, Nathan, thumbs up. That's a agree pick. If I would have taken something else, but I don't think it was a bad pick. That's a, a disagree pick. I'm like, okay, you know what? That's fine. But, uh, you know, your pick is good too. If there's, you know, if I think it's just like, oh no, that's a clear mistake. We just give it a mistake. And, and, you know, this is to just like put it in perspective, but also to give some Nathan some, some concrete feedback basically. So we're going to go through this draft that Nathan provided for us. And, uh, any words before we get in on the format, you did say you had some experience, but on this draft as well, not, not to spoil anything, but uh, any any thoughts beforehand? Um, so I guess just to give context for people, this was my fifth draft in the format. Mm -hmm. um, I My record was, before this draft would have been 19 and 10. Nice. So, but a caveat that for everybody, uh, you know, I had took a long time off, so I was coming back in bronze. So I think I got spotted a couple games in there. Right. Uh, so this was draft number five, and I thought it was... Uh, one of the trickier ones for me, um, you know, before I think I was able to find a, a good lane or find an architect that I, I, archetype that I thought was strong. Uh, this one, I kind of bounced around a little bit. I wasn't really sure. And so I thought, wow, this would be a good one to to reboot the the, the franchise, if you will, and, <laughs> and come back and get Alex's feedback to see how many mistakes I made. I think it's going to be a high mistake percentage one, but we'll see. Okay, so let's just dive into this first one here. And before I look at your actual pick, uh, just let me know, what do you think about what's going on in this pack? What do you see? What sticks out to you? I, I honestly had no idea what to pick in this first pack. So the cards that I was somewhat interested in was the Vine Shaper Prodigy. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've had that in the past or, you know, I've seen it on stream or whatnot. It looks strong. Um, the Writhing Necromats, like that seemed pretty good. The Myria's Outrider has killed me a number of times oh, yeah. and then none of the uncommons really like were drawing me in and the rare i mean uh, i don't need a land of <laughs> types so it was between those and i wasn't really sure and i didn't want to commit to anything so i actually just took the land but um yeah i, I wasn't even sure so like no idea on this one yeah so this pack has some good cards, but not some awesome cards. I would be a little bit disappointed, I think, if this was my opening pack. Often in Dominaria, there's some really premium uncommons. And like you said, this pack doesn't really have any exciting uncommons. Tori is okay, but she's she's not, you know, a key to the red-white aggressive deck or anything. So where does my eye go? Pretty similar to where your eye went. The Outrider, the Necromass, uh, the... The one I think that I sticks out to me that you didn't uh, shout out is the Kellen Strike team. I don't know like, if you've seen this card or had any experience with it, but no, um, this card is the one of the keys to red white go wide aggro. It's it's really really the best token maker. The haste really matters. A bunch of these in a deck. It's it's kind of funny. It looks like it is essentially a five drop, but just you know five drop after five drop of tokens, they're gonna die pretty quickly, especially if you have one of the anthems. So. I think that might be my pick here. And here's the thing about Dominaria packs. Like, you could have taken Miria's Outrider, Rising Necromass. A land, I think, is even okay here, right? There's a lot of good options uh, that are often around the same power level. And I'm gonna, I think there's going to be a lot of disagrees, potentially, in this pack or in this draft. Just because there's never, there's, it's, it's rare that I'm, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm going to be like, oh, that's, that's just like completely off because there's so many viable options. So, what would Alex take here? I think I would take the Kelvin Strike Team just because it is the best card in the deck that it goes in in this pack but like i said all those other cards are, are options i think i wouldn't take a land though so you know coming all the way back to what you're i don't think i would take the geothermal bog here 
just because I think unless you have a really strong, you know, preference for the color pair that, you know, that the, the land you're taking goes in, or if it's a green one, so that it contributes to your domain decks, I think you should generally just take the good spells over the, the lands early on. I think that taking lands early on kind of uh, ends up in a place where sometimes you just like don't get the good domain payoffs. You don't have good cards to splash even. So I would take the strike team here. Those other cards are in the mix. And I do think I would consider this a mistake. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Off to a strong start from the return. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Pack two here. What do we got going on here? What uh, what catches your eye? So I had to read the Silex. I, 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 um, it ended up seeming like the strongest card in the pack. But I, I was also looking at, um, again, the Outrider. Yep. Um, I don't have any experience with the Fire Nato, but I think Sorcery Speed kind of turned me off of that. Um, and then my general impression from what i've read again or heard you know through podcasts like yours that is enlist isn't that strong so no. i wasn't really looking at the berserker but i'd like to hear your thoughts on that so i guess what i was looking at was the silex and then the fire nato and the outrider yeah so i think this is another it's kind of funny another pretty weak pack uh with a few standouts but uh, definitely below the bar for dominaria so let's start with the rare karn silex uh i think it's it's fine uh, it definitely can have be quite powerful in a domain deck where, you know, often your payoffs lie in the four and plus mana value range. So, you know, you put this on, you play this on three, maybe your opponent's off to a, a fast start. They don't really want to play anything into it because you can wipe the field. But the really powerful thing is when you're able to go like a four drop, play a five drop, have the Silex, and it's like, well, my stuff's going to survive, all the little dinky stuff dies, and it also gets up, you know, the jump blockers out of the way for your for your big domain payoff. So I think it's a decent card for sure. Um, I think that the best card in the pack is just the Myria's Outrider, though. Uh, I think that it's just one of the better domain payoffs are common. It's such a I just think it's just like a really solid card. It doesn't even need to go in a domain deck necessarily. You know, you can play it in your, like, Red White Aggro deck if you need to. The other cards in the pack, the Berserker, not a fan. Yeah, most things within the list just kind of suck. The Fire Nato, also not a fan. It's it's not so much the sorcery. That matters too. That That is clunky, but it's the five mana. You know, five mana removal spell is just really, really clunky. So this is a disagree for me in this spot. I think the Silex is fine. I would have taken the Outrider though myself, but just because I think it's a, uh, you know, just an easier card to, you know, it, it's not as finicky as the Silex, I suppose. You just play it, it does good stuff. Silex is a bit more variable in in the games you play, or sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not as good. So just some some anecdotes here, I guess I'll just sprinkle them in. The Silex ends up making the deck, and it felt like almost like a, I don't want to say like a free counter spell, but like you mm -hmm. said, like I put it on the board, and you could tell people were holding back cards yep. to not play them, which then if you get on the board early, like it actually kind of kind of helps. Um, and the other anecdote, two anecdotes also is. The Outrider, um, I did end up playing against somebody who went like, Outrider, Outrider. I killed them with the Silex, and then they had the black green card that brings them back. Oh, <laughs> the the, card. so like, that that person did like fifteen damage to me just off of those because it they was were uh, Bortuk Bone Rattler, the the six yeah, drop. Exactly. Yeah. So we take the Silex and we move on to pick three here. So yeah, again, this is I gotta tell you, Nathan, this draft, it's it's <laughs> been it's been a bit wonky i'm looking at three packs in a row and you know if this is a high level four money four stakes draft i'd be pretty sad that these are my three picks so okay. what uh what stands out here to you <laughs> um so i i had previously had the lurgorf and i had some of those three ones that mill three when they come into play yeah i forget what they are um and it was really strong so that that caught my eye i'm like well also if again i don't know the power levels of all the cards well enough i'm like but if two people passed on this like Maybe that's starting to be something to consider. Yep. Um, the Hurler Cyclops looked strong. I mean, be able to sack something to deal one damage. But at five against the five drop thing that you talked about. Um, and I had previously had a red green deck that was pretty strong. With, so the Rada I looked at. Um, my, my pet peeve with the Rada, though, is that it has to attack and it can't pump itself. So right. like basically it's good for like one attack. Um, other than that, nothing else was really interesting to me. So I just landed on the Lurgoif. Yeah, so I think this pack is like pretty medium overall. Lurgoif, it's kind of funny that the the what you mentioned with the uh, the three one that mills the eerie soul tender. That's the one place I think that you can actually make really good use of this card if you do have like I think this you this is a card you do need to build around. Unlike the original Tarmogoyf, where that kind of just like grew <laughs> nicely over the course of the game. 
I think, you know, cre creatures don't make their way to the graveyard quickly enough to, for this to be a, a good creature unless you are enabling it somehow. Yes, it's got the kicker to mill cards and, you know, you can grow it uh, by itself. But I think you do want a deck that has some synergy around self mill. So I think it's fine to take it here. It's not a very good or exciting card, but neither is anything else in this pack, right? So there's the Goblin Picker. There's the Flowstone Kavu. I think those cards are, are solid. Shadow Prophecy is actually another solid card. But all these cards, like, you can get later, you know? So I would just take the Lurgoy here just because, yeah, maybe you end up with, like, in a sick self mill deck and it's actually pretty good. I, this is mostly speaking to the fact that this pack just isn't that good and I might as well take a, a flyer on the high upside card, basically. All right. We got a pack here in pick four. It's got some better cards for sure. So what's uh, what are your thoughts here? So I, I'm reading the Miasma here because I had never seen it before. Yeah. But that looks pretty <laughs> strong. I mean, four mana... Give everything you have plus one plus one and kill the next the you know two toughness stuff. Just one thing. It's a put a counter on something. Oh, it's not all your creatures. Yeah. See, citizens arrest. I mean, that looks like you know seeing that fourth seems pretty strong as well in terms of signals. Um, I was basically looking at those two, maybe the lookout. Um, but again, I wasn't really enamored with that. And then there's always the default of just taking the land. I ended up taking the miasma, but again, not really sold on this. I was like, all right, well. Lurgoyf wants to be green black or green blue. Why don't I just take a black card that kind of goes potentially with it? Yeah, so one of the big picture things I've I've been saying a lot about this format, and I'm sure some of the viewers of this channel will have heard me say this before, but this is a format that I think really, really rewards drafting the hard way in a way that a lot of formats in the past two years haven't really, at least to the extent that this format does, because this format is so balanced. There's just so many decks you can draft. I don't feel like any color is better than another one by that much. I don't feel like any archetype is so much better than another archetype. And so I really think that you should just take the best card, no matter what you have, up until pick like five or six. Obviously, you know, within reason, you're not going to just like always like, you know, you go blue card, blue card, blue card, take a, you know, the best green card was also like a pretty good blue card in the pack. But if you're kind of, uh, you've got to start like you do, you don't have the strongest pulls. You don't really have, you know, cards that are like, well, I really want to be this color. Take the best card regardless of what's in your pile. And I think that the best card in this pack is the Talos Lookout. Uh, there's just okay. a four, four mana flyer. It's not like, you know, you know, it's not Organ Hoarder from Midnight Hunt, for example. But it is a pretty solid card. It's a good blocker. It's a good attacker. So Miasma is a fine card, too. I just think it's worse than Lookout. And I would just take the Lookout here. So mistake? Yeah, I would, I would give this one a mistake, I would say. All right, pick five here. We go back to kind of medium stuff. Uh, what uh, what does Nathan say about this pack? So I looked at the gin. Uh, again, I'm not, wasn't blown away with it. It, it seems like solid with a six man or four, four flyer, mm -hmm. but I, I, I wasn't blue and I didn't feel like the need to be blue. So I was really looking at the writhing necromance or the death bloom gardener. Um, but again, not really feeling much draw one way or the other. I think I landed on the, the Necromance. The Necromass. I can't seem to say that word. The <laughs> well, it, may, it makes you want to say Necromancer, right? It, like, does, it looks yeah. like that, yeah. Uh, the, the Necromass. But again, you know, I wasn't really sure. I probably should have just landed on the, the six mana four four flyer. But, but I'm interested to get your feedback here. I hate to tell you, Nathan, but it's a big agree. It's a big agree for me. <laughs> I like I like the Necromass going a bit. So, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is... All of these cost reduction creatures that say, you know, this spell costs one less for each creature. There's the blue one that's Larian Terror that reduces its cost for spells in your grave. There's this one. Most of these cards are just pretty good cards. Like, there's a cycle of them, one for each color. And uh, they are very emblematic of what the color wants to do, right? Like, black wants to self-fill. This Argivian fill, like, you want to have a lot of creatures. And um, they're all just pretty good for the most part. I mean, the red and the white one, and there's the most monstrosity in this pack, too, are, are less good for sure. But I really do like the the blue, the black, and the green one too. So this is great. I it's almost like a build around common in a way where you're like you take this, gives your deck a little bit of direction, and hey, like it even plays well with your your Urborg Lurgoyf too. So yeah. that's that's nice as a little bit of a synergy concession. So yeah, I think this is the best card in the pack, and it's what I would take. Can you talk a little bit about the gin? I, I haven't seen it in play or haven't played it. Is it? just too much too expensive yeah it's a little bit too expensive it's, it's too expensive its body is you know six mana four four that's a little bit small often when you're playing the necromass it, it's coming down for like four mana a lot of the time mm -hmm. and uh, you can double spell in the same turn later in the game the gin i think you know if we're just comparing the two 
it, it's just you you tap out for it on turn six and sometimes it eats a removal spell that sucks sometimes it's just like not enough impact for six mana your opponent's going wide whereas like the necromast for example looks similar ish but again it, you can double spell with it a lot of the time on turn seven or on turn six or something so it, it is looks kind of similar but is is quite a different card and the death bloom gardener is that a decent card in this format like what what's the deal with it i would try i generally try not to play death bloom gardener if i can help it just because when you're fixing your mana and you're playing a deck with a lot of colors you want the lands to fix your mana not the spells because you want to contribute to your domain right you want to be able to make your all your domain cards like if you're playing a bunch of colors you probably have domain cards you want to make those better gardener doesn't do that it's not a terrible card but it's not a priority all right, so we move on to pick six here. So yeah, again, kind of kind of mediums. What's uh, what's going on here? We just, it looks like oh, we just I I, I jumped to the punchline here. We're just taking yeah. a land, and, and you know what? I don't even think we need to talk about this pack too much. But I, I thought I, this pack was terrible. Yeah, yeah, no, just take a land. That's a great piece of advice I, I could give. Whenever a pack is like really whatever, just take the land. And I'm pretty sure that's you know I know you know that in general, but that's some of a lesson that we learned from some previous formats too, right? Like. Call Time and Strixhaven. Like, I, that's that's some advice that I, I'm pretty sure that we talked about in previous episodes, too. All right, pick seven here. And, uh, yeah, we get some okay stuff here. What's uh, what's what's looking good so to I, you? I, I'm looking at what I picked, but I, I think in retrospect, I probably should have taken one of the two black cards. But I, I wasn't sure if they were decent or not, so I ended up taking the land again. You just take uh, the Radiant Grove. No, I think that's totally Radiant fine. Grove, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think the War Horse is a solid card. I actually like it quite a bit, especially in like a black-white deck. Um, but no, I think this is a good place to just take a land. Everything is fine, not amazing, but yeah, take the land here. I should also note the Najal here. I don't know if this at all caught your eye. It didn't just because it wasn't my colors at gotcha. all, but I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, it's, I, it's it looks like an exciting card. You know, it's like gives your thing slash and copies things and... It's, it's just got the problem that a lot of the cards we just looked at had. It was just like, it's a five drop that sometimes just like comes down and dies and gets bounced and you're down on mana. So it, it's, you know, high upside when you untap with it. It's pretty good, but it's, I wouldn't take it over a land here. Partially because, you know, you're not really touching it and partially because it's just like not that exciting, even in a good red blue deck. All right, pick eight here. What do we got here? Okay, so this is an interesting pack. So this is the, oh, like, this is, you know, the last new pack we'll see. In general, I thought this draft was like very low power. Yeah. But um, uh, because I had so many different uh, laying types already, the only thing that was really like interesting to me was Gaia's Might. Um, I don't think I think I was also potentially looking at the the Get to Amplifier because I think it does like a Mana War thing type, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I was looking at that, but I, I landed on the the Gaia's Might. Yeah, big agree with that. I'm I'm a really big fan of Gaia's Might, even in a non super aggressive deck. Like if you're just like a mid rangey domain deck a lot of the time there are a lot of creatures that are pretty big that need to be double blocked and you know when you when you're expecting your opponents to double block then combat tricks get a little bit better but also guys might just a really good combat trick like he has plus four plus four sometimes plus five plus five sometimes just kills your opponent right there's like a decent number of tramplers or just on an unblocked creature so yeah guys might just a card that you know we're trending towards i would say a slower mid-range maybe black green maybe blue green you know something in that space uh you know, just domain -y deck. And yeah, Guy's Might's good there. So I big agree on this one. So now we get to our wheel here and uh, we'll speed through the wheel, but I'm curious. So what do we take here? We take the Vivisector. I, I, took, the, I took the two drop because I felt yeah. like I was light on the two drops. And I think if I, there's two things I remember remembering either in this pack or the next pack is that um, there was another Necromass somewhere. Maybe it was the next pack. And then there's another one. Of, what's the conspiracy? Or the look at the number of cards equal to your land types and oh shadow keep prophecy two. yeah yeah i was look. i was keeping my eye out for that um so i just took the two drop here to fill out the bottom of the curve i would i would actually take the necromass here i think just like okay. now that if you have two necromasses you can really build towards it you can be like okay go all in on the self mail i think vivisector is okay but it's just medium enough that just take the payoff card basically over the filler two drop all right. Yeah. So I'll put that down as a mistake. Uh, and then we get this one where we take a. Oops, I took the splatter goblin just to drop again. Yeah. Again, I. Yeah. I I would disagree with this. Not saying it's a mistake because I do think I would again. I you know so I was seeing the praises of guys might I would take guys might here, but splatter okay. goblin serviceable to drop if you're trying to be defensive. All right, and then this one the the soldier wield. So that's pretty nice. I assume that's, that's what we take that's here. That's what I took. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. 
we get to this pack with you know some whatever cards. I took a... the bone splitters, yeah, but I don't sure. think it really matters. It's the most playable card here. Basically. Can I at least give myself an A for that? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> get a freebie. <laughs> okay, so I know our faces are kind of covering the the cards here a little bit, but just to spell it out here, we've got some green black cards and three lands: a blue white land, a red black land, and a green white land. So, what are you thinking going into pack two? I'm thinking that I'm not in love with the green that I have. Uh, if, if I had to choose between green or black, I would lean more towards the black. Um, right. And that I'm kind of flexible still, honestly. Like, I don't feel like I have a good direction. Yeah, and this is a draft. So generally, if, if there's no lanes that are open, like you're just like, oh, this is clearly like I'm getting all these good blue-red cards late. Um, and also, if there are lands that are coming to you later, you know, you got some of these lands pretty late and kind of just for free. I generally try to trend now at the end of pack one that I have some idea what the table is doing towards a domain deck because the domain decks, well, they can just play a bunch of colors. And, you know, if, if you are, the table is gifting you the lands, you can have a better sense that at the end of the draft, you'll have enough to play a good domain deck. So that's what I would be thinking going into this next pack. Just like pick up some domain payoffs, see what I can do there. Don't have to just be black green. See if you can pick up a, some few, a few more colors because, you know, black green medium stuff is, well, medium <laughs> a lot of the time, you know. So I think, uh, I think you can branch out here if we see some powerful cards. Not a great first pack, right? No, and also not a great start to the second pack, too. <laughs> you got some not amazing cards. But yeah, you're right. I would be uh, pretty much in line with what you would have. I would have a few different cards, but uh, pretty, you, pretty similar. You, yeah, you'd be a little bit stronger with the domain line. With, yeah, I, uh, exactly. I, I would lean into do the domain cards a little bit more. What do we take from this pack? There's a few standouts in my mind, but I'm curious what your eyes see. I was looking at the Smorgasbord of Lands. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, none of them are green black. So I was like, oh, well, the one color that I was actually interested in. Ah, so let's um, stop there for a second. It's kind of funny you say that because I'm interested in the non green black lands because you are green black. You're going to be putting forests and swamps in your deck. You should actually be looking for other land types. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of funny. It's, it's a little bit of a twist on what we usually would expect, right? Where <laughs> I'm actually looking for the off color lands to enable my domain cards. So these lands were, were you know, your eyes initially see. Ah, not so interested in them. I'm like, ooh, red black land, ooh, green green red land, even like red blue land. Like that's kind of nice because if you're green black based, then red and blue is two. You know, that's four domain the right there. Colors. Right. So, so those all are, are of of note to me. But what else so, in this pack? So like, let's just compress this decision down to the four lands, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Of those four, which would you take? I would probably take the Wooded Ridge line because it touches green, which is the best for domain. You don't, you don't want to be touching green. And red is a fairly common splash in the domain decks with the Outriders, and there's a few other red, good red cards you can splash. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't take a land, but it's just interesting there. Um, I ended up landing on the Tribute to Urborg. Yeah, um, I, I just think... wanted to get some removal. Yeah, and I think Tribute to Urborg is a, a serviceable removal spell. I think you do want to be able to kick it to yeah. be able to uh you know put, or be happy with it in your deck uh i mean it's fine as a negative two negative two but you really would like to kick it at some point there is a card i'll just you know think uh before doing this pick one pack one there is a card i would take if uh, we didn't have a bunch of other cards in our pile you want to have a guess of, of what you think i would take pick one pack one here the only thing i would potentially look at there would be to, to destroy evil yeah it's destroy evil yeah exactly i think that card's great i think that is a really premium removal spell I even think you could take it here. You've got two white lands in the pile, a green white land and, you know, white blue land doesn't help you yet, but it might in the future, right? So I think either of those would be fine. This is actually, you know, I actually probably would take the destroy evil here. I think that okay. it is a good notch better. So this is, a, this is a disagree for me because I think it's totally fine to just take the black card, but I kind of have faith that, you know, I'll pick up the fixing for my cards. And that's my, that's my mindset a lot of time for this set. I'll pick up the fixing eventually, especially when you're in a pod like this one that has been giving you some lands a little bit later. So I would take the Destroy Evil, but uh, I think the Tribute's fine. I think I need to recalibrate, because normally these cost like four mana, right? Or three mana, and, right. they're, and they're sorcery speeds usually, or something like that? Yeah, usually they're just a lot clunkier at four mana, yeah. like you said. two mana instant, all right, all right, I can see that. But sure. the other thing too is, remember those cost-reducing creatures like that I was saying were mm -hmm. are such a, you know, like a staple of the format? Kills all those for super, super cheap, right? That's A lot of the games come down to those cards, and well, that's a good answer to them. Yeah, all right. That, that's a, a, a. I need to recalibrate on that. All right. What do we got going on in this pack here? So I, I think this might be the best pack I've seen. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have some good cards for once. Uh, so we got Tail Swipe, which I think is strictly better than the Bite Down, in my, in my humble opinion. 
It's like, uh, you know, be careful with that term. That term is going yeah, to end. Yeah, bite down, you know. It's, <laughs> it's going to, you know, the fight, comment section yeah. is going to be like, actually, strictly better. Actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's better most of the time. Yeah. Um, the Urgborg re repossession, I think, is really strong. And then the black-green dual land, you know, as I mentioned before. Um, and maybe the Phyrexian Rager were what I was looking at. I ended up landing on the tail swipe. Ah, so I, I think this is a mistake here. I think that okay. Urgborg repossession is just so important for any black deck. Um, and especially your black green deck where you can kick. It's a good card if you can't kick it. Like, you just put it in your deck. But if you can kick it, it's it's phenomenal. Like, this is just the the grindiest of grind cards. It's all you want. And, and if we're leaning into synergy a bit here, it does work with your self mill, your your, your, your uh, Urborg, Lurgoif. I guess it's kind of funny. You're taking creatures out of the graveyard, making it smaller. Yeah. But, you know, point stands. They do play well together. This card is fantastic, and it's the it's the backbone for a lot of my like base black domainy or base black green domainy deck. So tail swipe is fine, but especially if you're playing a bunch of colors or just like have the ability to play a bunch of colors, you can kind of pick up removal spells from other colors. Where this the Urborg repossession is a lot less replaceable here. If the Urborg wasn't there, what would you pick? Uh, I might just take the Phyrexian Ranger, honestly, over Tail Swipe. I think Tail Swipe okay. is fine, but I I think that uh, you can just there's just better removal spells to pick up pick three here so you know kind of narrowing it down here just uh to speed through this uh you know as we're going through the draft year urborg rootwalla spotter goblin and uh which one took another removal spell yeah i think that's yep. totally fine i think any of those would be okay there i don't feel too strongly about that pick four here we got some lands we got a shadow prophecy we got the elf worm and nathan takes oops so there's nathan take I took the land. Takes the land. Yeah, I think that's that's great, too. I That's what I would do, because I, I like Shadow Prophecy, but I think just, like, taking land, opening yourself up to domain payoffs is exactly what I would do here. And that's a lot of what I'm trying to do at this part of the draft, just open myself up to potential lanes that are, that are, are going to come my way, right? Like, maybe I open maybe a good blue card, or maybe I just open a good domain payoff, and I want to be able to enable that kind of stuff. So I like that a lot over kind of medium cards. It's and like to, all these <laughs> yeah all these these all yeah all these cards are kind of medium take a battlefly swarm yeah i think that's totally fine badger that those are the two i was looking at the badger yeah yeah does it what do you think does it no, matter i think i think it card? doesn't matter too much the fly is totally fine pick six here i wonder if we take you know take another tribute to Urborg or no i took the two drop spider goblin because i felt like i was already good on removal and yep. i wanted to get some bodies especially for the uh writhing necromass and uh Lurgoyf. And then we go to this one, and okay. Can I just put these down as agrees? Yeah, yeah, there's no agrees in my books, yeah. Oh, but with this one, this one I might disagree on. Oh, you're thinking about it, though. <laughs> thinking about it. Let's see where I go. Let's see what, what oh, Alex yeah, is going to give Oh, yeah, the fly, me. yeah. I, I, yeah, I would have taken the necromass there. I, I, I did. I did. Oh, did I you take the last second there? I didn't miss it. Yeah, last second, I, I audible. Now I have oh, two Oh, you snuck it in. Nice. Awesome. Okay, yeah. I agree with that. That'd be great. Okay, we're on the right track. And right. we take a land here. Yep, that's fine. I took the land here because I knew there was another Shadow Prophecy in another pack, so I tried yep. to, to wheel that. that. Love that logic. I do want a Shadow Prophecy or two, but um, I love the land here. And now we get to the wheel. Ooh, the Destroy Evil's still here. I wonder if we take it. I did. I did. Sweet. Yeah, Explore. I could, I could even see playing that card. Ooh. Moment of truth here. You got a second chance here. <laughs> what do we take? We took it. All right, all right. I'm proud. I'm proud. And so many Battlefly Goblins and Spotter I Goblins. Know. Or uh, Battlefly Swords. Does, does this agree, disagree? Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right? these these are just very whatever. Oh, okay, we had a Shadow Prophecy back. That's great. So That was the one I was looking for. Now, let's just talk about Pack 2 here. What's happening? We've got still a bunch of medium cards. And not so much the fault to your own. But, you know, it's, it's kind of low synergy, low power... So, what do you think we're looking for in pack three? I was really hoping to pick up those, again, you know the name of it, I don't. The 3 1 mill people, the c creatures. The soul like, tenders, yeah, I, I yeah, agree. That would be I, great. I think that's what's missing in this deck. Yeah, and, and you know, you can't always just like open a powerful card, right? You know, it's just like obviously the, the number one thing we're going to hope for is a bomb, and that's not always going to happen. But, you know, ha I think the way to kind of uh, leverage that if you don't open a bomb is just like be like, okay, well, Back to fundamentals, like, do I have good curve? Do I have good removal? Do I have good top end? You know, that kind of stuff. And I think you're on track for that. So really, we're looking for some synergy pieces and some some good top end. And what do you know? <laughs> we see some. We see a pretty good top end card. Yeah, I mean, we opened the bomb of 
Carpus and Forest, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good for the collection or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we think you get the ancient though. I, I That's the, exactly the ancient what we want to see. Huge agree on that one. Pick that guy's two. huge, gaining five life. Like I didn't like. That's just a big win. Yeah, he's gigantic, just massive, and, and exactly life gain matters a lot too. Take a braids fight for a turn, or reading the braids fight for a turn at least. Reading it, I didn't yeah. know really what it did. Uh, I ended up landing on the rager. Yep, I like rager here. So you know, as this draft has gone on, Nathan, I've been agreeing and agreeing with your picks. It's just unfortunate that you know the uh, the packs have not really gone your way. And it, the thing is, it's not like we're passing by powerful cards. It's not like we're like, oh, I should have been in red, blue, or whatever. You know, it's just like the packs are just a little bit weak. And, you know, sometimes that happens. I think it's just a good example to for for uh, some drafters out there watching. Like, it just happens sometimes. And when it, this does happen, what you want to do is, well, you know, obviously navigate into a lane if it is, if it's not, uh, if you're not in the open lane. But like I said, like stick to some fundamentals, take the good cards when you can, make sure you have a good curve, make sure you're picking up removal, that kind of stuff, right? Just, like, make sure your your deck is fundamentally sound as a magic deck. And I think you've done a pretty good job of that as we've gone on here. Great. Um, I looked at the Connoisseur here. I didn't think it was great, so I took the Urborg repossession. Yep. I'll play three of those in this deck. <laughs> if, my, if my plan is just, like, grind them out, buy back my Ancients, then I'm really happy about that. I wonder, though, do we take the Bite Down? No, we take the Ancient. Okay, we take the Ancient. And that, that's exactly... <laughs> so with ways to buy back cards... You know, cards like Urborg Possession, they're only as good as the best thing you're buying back, right? If you're buying back a bunch of Splatter Goblins, who cares, <laughs> right? Yeah. But now that you've got these high-value targets, I'm actually pretty excited about where this deck's going. Okay, and then we see a third one, and, and I'd be thrilled to take that. I wonder if Nathan does. Um, just spoiler alert. Yeah, I do. Okay, we do. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Moving on to pick six here. And, you know, we're rounding at the draft. We're kind of just like... If, yeah, if we're I lucky, the, oh good. I took the vivisector. Yeah. Thank you, vivisector. Yeah, yeah. These are kind of just whatever. I'm if giving myself agrees for these, for the record. Yeah, these are all agrees. Yeah, I should, I should be <laughs> saying that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I took the prodigy here over the vivisector. I feel like there was more upside with being able to kick it, and I think I have a green blue land in the deck. Totally. Yep, I would do that as well. Ooh, we get a a signpost on common. That's pretty sweet. So let's talk about this guy. For sure. So I I, I took him. And I played him, and most of the time, because I didn't have any other mill cards, he was an 05. I think that's I have... okay. <laughs> okay. So, so the the he's got a lot of stuff going on. He's got he gets big in the late game. He surveils you each turn, gives you some card selection, gains you life, and he's a X five body blocker. I think the gets big eventually line is actually the least important part. So it can be okay. disappointing. We're like, oh, it's an 05 or it's a 1-5. But every turn, scrying you, putting stuff in your grave, that's really good. Sitting around and having incidental life gain, well, one, can put the lands in the grave to grow itself if you want. But two, making it so that like an aggro deck has a hard time burning you out or just dealing the last few points of damage, that matters a lot too. And again, just like sitting around as an uh, X5 body, that matters too. So uh, this card is really good even if you don't you know, make it a 5-5 five five as you know, like on turn 6 or whatever. Sure. Yeah. I mean, just to talk about that real quick, talking about incidental life gain. So I mentioned earlier that one deck had three outriders. They actually had four and they dealt five each time. And it didn't kill me because I had both of my, uh, was it Moss Beard Ancients come into play? And then the turn they would have killed me with it, I was able to sack a couple lands to gain life to get out of burn range. Nice. Yeah, that's exactly so right. Case in point. That. Yeah. So we go through here. That's our last new pack. We take, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, actually, you know, it's kind of, I said it's kind of whatever. You took an uncommon here. But I actually think Second Shadow Prophecy would be decent in this deck. Okay. It helps us hit our land drops. You've got Domain. It puts stuff in the graveyard, too. You know, you were, you were saying uh, you were looking for the Eerie Soul Tenders. We didn't see those. But these do an okay impression. They put stuff in your graveyard when you have high enough Domain. No, I, so. I, I thought they went on the bottom. So I'll, I'll put that as a mistake. I just took the ball more just to round out the collection. For but sure, yeah. I, I didn't think I was going to play the Prophecy, but I guess in retrospect, that was a mistake. And we move on to, yeah, just like whatever. I think all the rest of the picks are irrelevant. If I yeah. gave myself a grease for all the other ones, I'll give myself a relevance for all of them. All right, let's look so, at our final build here. And we've got, you know, a, a very respectable looking deck, honestly. Like, uh... Is if this is the final build, I would have done it a little bit differently, as in I would have put in the domain lands, like especially the blue green one. Like did you yeah, end up playing the blue green one? Um I re I, I I fired off the first draft like this. 
um, and then realized, oh shoot, I should have the blue one in there because I have the the um, tribute to Orborg, the Lurgoyf that I can kick. Um, so I, I I put it back in. Yeah, so this is very similar to what I would build to. So I'm just looking at this deck and so I kind of if I could improve it, and there was a few points in the draft where I think this, you know, we could have improved on this. A few more top end cards. If you just take took that like one more writhing necromaster, I think it would have been good. Th that's what this deck is missing. Just like, oh, it's it's not even that bad, but just like if I can have a little more up here and a little less down here, basically a little like I think you're. This isn't a set where I feel like you need all of these medium two drops, right? Okay. I think you could get away with a few more five drops, a few more six drops. I think that this deck grinds really well. It survives pretty well. It might just get. It might just be a bit too dorky in the late game when you're drawing sp splatter goblins instead of your action cards, you know? So that's that's one light criticism I could have of this deck. Overall, in the draft, we differed in the beginning quite a bit, but as we streamlined, I think you found the right lane. So d really good job of streamlining to you know, pack two, pack three. Pack one, the card evaluation stuff, I think the only thing I would have uh, you know changed going forward for you is... Be more open just to taking the best cards early on, regardless of what your colors are. Okay. Yeah. And you never know. That might have changed what the trajectory of the draft. You know, the, the whole butterfly effect. Who knows what would have yeah. happened if a few cards here and there were taken. But from your perspective, any any uh, final words here? Any any takeaways? Um, I think the splatter goblins were a little more anemic than I than I thought. Right. Um, uh, so I, I would probably have, like you said, I, I I had better options to play than them. Um, I don't know what it would have been. Maybe a Gaia's Might. And um, when I brought back in the blue, bring back in the Vine Shaper Prodigy, probably those changes. Um, and then I did leave a Shadow Prophecy in the board, which I think like I think that's a mistake. I didn't realize they went into the graveyard. That would have been very helpful. Right. Um, you know how this played out. Honestly, I, I went one three, but two of the games like either extreme mana flood of screw so like throw those out that just happens right um the the other ones the uh yeah it, it felt like a very anemic deck it didn't feel like i had any like real power to it like i won the game the one game i won by just grinding them out eventually um but it, it didn't feel very strong compared to some of the other decks that i had played in this format yeah and i think that's a function of the draft i guess yeah a little bit of function of the draft for sure I think my advice, uh, again, like to you and to anybody watching, is just like don't be afraid to prioritize expensive cards a little bit more highly in this format because it's not the fastest format, right? And high impact cards do decide games a lot of the time. And I don't mean rares; I mean just like a five-five death touch. You know that that is a big deal in these games. Yeah, those guys were house. I I, I definitely played them and then brought them back. I think I cost cast like five in one game. Nice. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's pack it up from here. Nathan, thank you so much for joining me, as always. And uh, everybody out there, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. We'll, we won't wait five months again. Yeah, yeah. Months, right? <laughs> All right, nice, nice. All right, that was nice and...